Hello, my name is Robin Lloyd, and I'm here with Jer Jerome Lipani, and we are going to be looking at a new special tape by Bread and Puppet and Peter Schumann. Uh, we are both um, aficionados, I would say, of Bread and Puppet over the years, and uh, this um, most recent one was produced just in September, uh, and um, it is, is quite unique and interesting. So I would like to ask Jerome, who ha was a videographer, um, how long have you been involved with taping Bread and Puppet and why? Why are you so interested in Bread and Puppet Theater? Well, I, I've been an art activist my entire life, my entire career for 55 years. Um, I first met Bread and Puppet uh, way back in the 60s. And um, I have followed uh, the career of Bread and Puppet for a very long time. I, I also, uh, in the late 60s, I, I joined the Living Theater uh, and, and traveled with the theater to Europe. Um, and uh, the Living Theater is very serious. Uh, theater, but also a great friend of Bread and Puppet. It, it, uh, it so happened that uh, Judith Molina, the, the founder of the Living Theater with Julianne Beck, gave uh, Peter Schumann a first rehearsal space in the early 60s uh, on Mondays when, when the Living Theater was not using that space. So there has always, because of that, uh, there has always been a relationship between, between Bread and Puppet and the Living Theater. Uh, and I have loved that history. Uh, and my filming of Bread and Puppet over the last 10 years, of which I've made about 70 films now, wow. uh, that are on my, on my channel, Jerome Lipani, YouTube, um, uh, is my, has been my way of manifesting that bridge, the cultural bridge of an activist theater uh, between Bread and Puppet and the Living Theater. So I try, I try to shoot the work of Bread and Puppet as if through the eyes of the Living Theater. Mm, mm. Uh, and there are, so there are many uh, points of relationship actually that and we will see some of those mm -hmm. as we as we move through our list of clips. Um, I will be able to to show you some of the directorial uh, 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 some of Peter's direction that mirrors the the work of the Living Theater, hmm. and that will come up. Yes, uh, and I'll, at a I'll just point. say that um, viewers, if they want to see some of my um, documents of Bread and Puppet. It's at greenvalleymedia.org. And the, what I have done is been uh, filmed very uh, sort of carefully documentary uh, image of the pageants, the pageants of the 90s. Uh, one of them was Convention of the Gods. These were such uh, huge dramas that took place in the, the meadow up at Glover that um, I just felt were always astounding to to choreograph. They were always astounding, and the, to to see to see that ancient sand quarry <laughs> amphitheater filled with forty thousand people at its height. You know, by the late nineties, uh, amazing, yes. just just amazing and wonderful. Yeah, the last one I was nineteen ninety eight. Was the last big. Yes. Uh, pageant. Um, I forget the name of that last one, but let's move on then. Had you filmed that one? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Gates of Hell. That was the name of it. Uh, Gates of Hell was 1998. Mm. Quite dramatic. So uh, we're going to look, we're going to start now with the first clip. We're going through different clips. And uh, this introduces what this short 30 minute. Um, a video document of the show Apocalypse Trauma. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so let's get started with that. And now, here in the presence of the paper mache representative of distressed humanity. Yes, now we should also notice that this image of distressed humanity has its fist raised in the air, uh, a defiant fist. Revolution is necessary, yes. is what Peter is saying. Uh, <clears throat> and that image, that huge uh, paper mache image, gets moved later to a corner of the of the of the theater, and the people acknowledge it and come and give obeisance to it in a way. Uh, you know, something I really want to point out is the amazing atmosphere that this uh, play takes place in, and this is called The Barn at Bread and Puppet. Well, and well it's not really called The Barn. It's called The Dirt Floor Cathedral. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> it, it, okay it's almost a like a barn. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> but it has those images, those small, uh, you know, it's not... Uh, like a religious building, but it has an aust austerity of something sacred there, of really uh, such amount of work and love and humanity going into all the figures that are yes. on the wall there. Uh, yes. So please take note of that ambiance. And um, mm -hmm. I think we could look at the next image. <clears throat> we now present an apocalyptic... The precision, precision. dance. And now, and, and I, I, I did my best to frame the images so that we could often see this fist raised in the foreground. So, this is an example, one of the examples in this, in this piece of Peter's anti-dance choreography. Uh, <clears throat> He was interested in dance from the very beginning, and I think people don't realize they think of him as a as a puppeteer and a and an artist. But dance was always integral to his his work, and it's a strange kind of dance. No ballerinas. <laughs> no, no ballerinas. No. That's why I call it anti dance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dance number three. Now she's pouring. We don't quite understand what that's about. Everybody. Everyone. Yes. Now this is the dance of everyone. Jumping around in this interesting way. <laughs> Our... And... Ah, um... uh, but then, then they just said, at the end of that, they said, Our Apocalypse, which is also printed at the top, it's written on the top of this image uh, uh, of, of the bedsheets, one, one of Peter's bedsheets, of which he has been producing so many lately. Yes. Uh, they, yes, over the last couple of years, I've had a hard time in keeping up with documenting them, in fact. Yeah, he <laughs> he's has been a so studio productive. and he, he sets up those bedsheets and, you know, these are the beautiful sort of wet dreams of the bed sheets. Well, <laughs> or the transfigured, uh -huh. the, the transfiguration of, yeah. of, those, of, of, the, of the dreams that people might have had in, those, in the hotels. They, the, the bed sheets themselves were uh, donated to Peter from an old hotel. Huh. Uh, a friend found a way to, to um, uh, give him those bedsheets, and, and they turned out to be an, an incredibly productive uh, medium for him. Well, could you talk a little bit about contessori? That's a term that uh, has been used in Bread and Puppet a lot, and usually it's in a small screen. It's called a cranky, and, and images are cranked ar around in a kind of a, a, a unique setting, but this is Contessori of a different dimension. Uh, yes. Uh, Contessori, um, as Peter, Peter talks about it, that it comes from a long tradition that's both an Eastern tradition and a Western tradition. Um, even uh, from, from China and from India and from Tibet, uh, they were creating images uh, and setting them up in tents 
so that the monks could teach the illiterate uh, population, they could teach them the Dharma, that on the Eastern side. Um, but uh, in medieval Europe, they were set up in front of the cathedral square um, and used in that way. They were also meant to be a teaching method uh, at, and or plays could be played right in front of them. Small plays could be played in front of them. Peter has revived this idea. He even, even in the Germany of his youth, he witnessed uh, those contestoria being played in the cathedral square. And also when he went to Italy uh, as a young man, uh, when uh, he was very impressed by the by the street theater, the street religious theater in Sicily, where they were also carrying huge puppets that were uh, representative uh, of the saint or of Christ and the Virgin, etc., you know, in, in, in religious processions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but Peter's, Peter's and Elka's spirituality became a much more Imagistic uh, translation of of a, of a defined uh, hierarchical spirituality, because uh, as people who have deeply socialistic, communistic mm -hmm. <laughs> integrity, uh, they needed to express a spirituality that was without a particular object. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and that, that is what we find in the dirt floor cathedral. We find all of these images that, that Peter has put around that have been made uh, in papier mache that express uh, many different facets of, of humanity. Uh, it's a kind of and, paganism, I think. And a kind of paganism, but also a, a kind of transcendentalism, in my eyes, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think in, in many people's eyes, I think that's one of the reasons why we are so attracted to, to Bread and Puppet's work. Uh, you, you know, for example, Peter, Peter always says, the reason why the word bread is first it's because it's more important than the puppets. <laughs> so that distribution of, of the bread after performances was, was something that Peter and Elka started uh, in, in, the, in the Lower East Side mm -hmm. uh, in the early 60s, 1963. And you know... Distribution of bread after the performance. Yeah, and you mentioned the word communism. I think it's, yes. it's interesting. People forget that Elka's mother was um, a, a youth at the time of the communist revolution and it totally changed her life and changed the life of her whole family. She uh, ha was a peasant and she became, I think, a medical person or at least uh, uh, active uh, uh, in, in, a, um, in, in an institution in one of the big cities. and. Um, we forget about the positive things that, that the Soviet communism gave to people. We remember here all the negative things, but yes. it did positively impact lots of lots of families in the in the Soviet Union. Yeah, the Stalin Stalin definitely changed mm -hmm. the 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 entire thrust of the communist revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, I, so. I'm, a, I'm a Trotskyist. In okay. fact, uh -huh. with Dragon Dance Theater, I played Trotsky. Oh. It was one of my favorite roles. Uh -huh. yes. well, you do look a bit like him. <laughs> <laughs> when I have round glasses, <laughs> it was a, they were perfect, good, uh, perfectly good disguise for Trotsky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go on to, uh, we're at Number four, strength and determination contestory. So this is a new uh, bedsheet coming out from behind. Yes. Strength this is a big one. and determination. Yes. This, 
is based on a quotation from Eldridge Colby, who was part of the Council on Foreign Relations. And it was said at the beginning of the Iraq War. And Peter quotes this several times you in this play. to fight a war. An aggressive world war needs to be prepared. So here Peter is talking about the military-industrial complex and how when it predominates in a society as it does in ours, the buildup of the armaments themselves is going to end up... War. Those armaments are going to be end up being used. They are not... They, are not simply a defensive weaponry, they become an aggressive weaponry. And they terrorize the, and they terrorize the, populace. the population, which is what we're seeing here. Yeah. And what is that music being played? And this, and this uh, music being played by Edith Corman is cut by Kachaturian. Piece by Kachaturian. He's a Russian. Uh, I think he was a Russian composer. Yeah. Strength and determination to choose to fight a war. An aggressive world war needs to be prepared. Yes. Now they're begging the audience to wake up in a way, I would say. Yes, they're asking, they're asking for people to have understanding about this. I certainly interpret it that way. Peter doesn't like to give interpretations of, of his work. Yeah. He wants people to come to it themselves, you know? He wants the work to have the impact impact that that will that will reach people's hearts and minds um, and here the actors are you know expressing the horror of the of the of the, of the attempt to deal with this to deal with this terrible syndrome of endless violence that is perpetrated by this country. <laughs> yeah. And yes. So he uses these very simple means, I mean, almost primitive means of, uh, of you know, people coming out with a decorated sheet. And, and, but to my mind, it, especially watching it all the way through, and I, I invite everyone to go and watch the tape and see the whole thing, and perhaps be moved like I was at um, at seeing it, and which caused me to want to invite you to and us to talk about it. Um, we could maybe we could go to the next one, which is the blah 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 Contessori. Yes, the blah 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 Contessori. <laughs> and of course. Blah 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 blah. And this, of course, is a quotation. <laughs> From uh, Greta Thunberg, blah, 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 her, blah, blah. when she ap ap appealed to the en environmental conferences blah, to please blah, do something blah, blah, besides blah. more blah blah blah. <laughs> blah, So, that has references to the modern ecological movement in which we, are, we, we do not want to see the destruction of the Amazon, which we, in which we need to preserve 
the forests and, and allow ourselves, allow our country to have build old growth forests <laughs> again. I love this segment with these three singers yes. uh, because the kind of singing is, I don't know, it's a kind of chanting. Yes. But the three voices are, they work together beautifully. Yes, and I'm not sure what language this is in, but it could be in a Palestinian or Lebanese language, it could be Arabic. Now, and here they are apparently making obeisance to this figure of distressed humanity. Now, what can that mean? They, they are not thinking of this necessarily as this image as a godlike image. I think uh, the way I feel about it is that they are attempting to appeal to the courage, to an inner courage that distressed humanity has got to find. We have got to find that courage in ourselves now in order to be able to survive, for this planet to survive, uh, for humanity to, to survive, for all of the animals in the world to decide uh, to survive, to yeah, we have the, to sort of live through the grief and through that begin to take action. I mean, the, the peace yes. movement has to grow in America. Let's put it bluntly there. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So the next image is really interesting because it's um, uh, students. These are images of students at the so-called defunct university of... All. Of all, okay. Yes. Let's see the next clip here. An amazing um, Contessori bedsheet, a donkey, and and a squawking duck and <laughs> other <laughs> monsters. And, yes. So they are repeating the essential words that we find there, including all. Peter has been very much into expressing uh, in, in his paintings of the last few years, all, the all. Now here, here we see an example of what I was talking about before, of the particular stage movements that were that came into being in the late 60s, for example, that the Living Theatre used in Paradise Now, for example, a very, the very famous play of the Living Theatre in, in the late 60s. I mean, we don't, one call, we don't think the, of that as dance, but it's, um, it's people moving, it's a dance. Yes, yes. So one, one sees the echoes. This is one place where there's a bridging place for me between the Living Theatre and the Bread and Public Theatre. Now, we, now the, you know, I mean, we see this very, very clear scene of chaos, chaos and horror of the political, social, economic, psychological horror of the moment that has to be faced. How do we face this? Peter is trying to help us to face it. And the actors themselves are expressing their own agony that, that they experience in their own lives here. Yes, students, not just college students, but high school students, even elementary students are, are, are suffering more than we did, uh, dealing with uh, yes. the crises they read about, the climate change, the violence. <clears throat> and Peter has effectively done, done, done the best, <clears throat> done a wonderful job at evoking these images.
Yes. <clears throat> Peter is trying to say this is real. Mm -hmm. This is pervasive in our society. Yes. Uh, we, and we have got to understand this. Uh, it, you know, in modern psychology, the, the talk has been about trauma, mm -hmm. over, really, over the last 25, 30 years. I worked in mental health, so I, was very, I got very much into the trauma theory. And, and, and it has been being expressed more and more. Uh, it has become a societal trauma effect that we are now facing. Mm -hmm. How do we face this with open eyes? Yeah, yeah. I think that's the big question that Peter is raising here. Yes, well, the next, the next uh, segment, the next uh, um, uh, bed sheet <laughs> is, is a, quite a complex one and a beautiful one. Uh, it, it's called The Wind and, and Angel Cantastoria. And um, so let's, let's start that one. Um, and part of... Um, oh, part of what I like about it is it brings up uh, behind a, um, uh, a, a wind figure. There he is. She is, he is, and I'm remembering again one of the pageants. It was called uh, Convention of the Gods, and wind seems to be one of the gods that Peter uh, evokes. And what what do you think he means by wind? I mean, is this uh, change, maybe? Yes, change, the uh, wind of time, perhaps, yeah. Now here we see, we begin to see a, a series of improvisations that happen four times in this series. Uh, yeah, so each, each of the actors will do their own uh, improv in relation to this angel figure. Mm -hmm. and, now, and, and here we have an overt spirituality, right? You know, when we're, it's angel number one uh, and and the angel cries out with a loud voice to not harm the earth or the sea or the trees. And I love the way that this Cantastoria, that this huge bedsheet is being turned around. Yes, graphically, it's totally unique. And then the horns blowing and wind appears again. Yes. Now, that was the beginning of the fourth improvisation, the fourth dance improvisation. Yeah. Um, now, is there one more of the improvisations of this? Uh, uh, I don't know if we're going to see it or not. We could, or, we, or it's in the film. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. That's a rather longer sequence. Yeah, maybe we want to move on to the They Say Contestoria. Yes. Uh, where we have an actual quotation from the Bible uh, that becomes a song. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness they comprehends it not. Rigorous. You'll see that coming up. And I hope they that we'll be able to hear that song. And here again, they're pointing to very important statements that need to be understood by all and of us globally, in internationally, darkness, not just in this country. It it's a global crisis we're in now. Who? Who is going to respond, right?
get a good view of the dirt floor cathedral. See, I, and I, I take that as a deeply prophetic statement that Peter has a very prophetic streak in him. He, he is often able to say the most astounding things that are, are an integration of the political and the spiritual the, and the transcendental. Uh, you know, that is, that is what is so marvelous about the, his work and has always been there. And it gives it so much power and so much profundity. Yes. And sometimes you have to work to, to put it into place. But I think in yeah. this Contessori and this play, it's, it's, it's pretty clear. I think he's really crying out to all of us. And I, I, don't, I can't think of any other artist in the United States at this time that is dealing so openly with the, with the grief we feel of what's happening to the environment and the violence that surrounds us. Yes, yes. <clears throat> and ultimately, the statements, all of the statements are beyond words. Mm -hmm. You know? What, what we feel in our hearts, finally, is not something that we can really articulate. And, and, and I think that Peter, uh, in the movement of the puppets, in the, in the use of the conscious story, and the raising of these questions, he leads, he's trying, he's leading up the public to that realization that we all must experience this on the insides of ourselves or we're not going to be able to respond to this current crisis well. We need, we need to feel it really deeply. Cli there, there can be all kinds of climate deniers, can't they? Even, even liberals and progressives, upper middle class people in this country, it's, it's uncomfortable for people to, to, to think about what we need to do. How are we going to change our energy system? It's, it seems so impossible for people to be able to contemplate even. Yes, you know, earlier um, in the summertime, Peter Schumann came to Burlington and did a short piece called uh, Bread Not Bombs. And yes. this was about uh, the Ukraine. He is very disturbed, as, as I am, about the amount of military aid that is going to the Ukraine, which will lead to more deaths, although the people who are receiving it feel it will liberate them. And uh, he is saying what Ukraine needs is bread, not bombs. And yes. Yeah. So um, should we see the next one? This is really the culmination. And, and bread, not bombs, means mercy, doesn't it? Uh -huh. It means mercy. It means compassion for other people. <laughs> it means that we need to have compassion in this world for each other and for all the creatures of the world. And bombs are not compassion. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK, dominance, full spectrum, uh, Cantasoria. Here's the next one. See, there's this, there's this state of attempting to grasp onto something and then being repelled. Full spectrum. Yeah, and afraid. Yes. This is a very moving moment here. Yes. Suddenly we have these flames up here. Ah. Uh. The planet is on fire. And she says the word nuclear. Nuclear. And, uh, 
Yes. Can we envision actually a nuclear exchange? Right. And how we just fold up in horror and the memory of Hiroshima and how it has extended into our, into our day. of the military. Focus on war. It's hard to know exactly what is meant here. We have no. figured out some parts no. of this. <laughs> Off, I, I, I daren't put an interpretation on this. I, I leave it to people to wonder about it. I remember even when the, the theater at its height um, in, in, in the late 90s, when I used to sit in the audience with 40,000 people, I would be hearing around me what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I would think, hey, people, you're not no, wait, here she's being telling. informed. What you just heard were actual quotes from members on the Council on Foreign Relations. This very council urged the United States to wage war on Iraq. So there that was we have a quote the, from Colby. That was the quote from Colby once again about an aggressive war needs to be prepared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and is being prepared. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and right now this week, the Germans and the Americans are moving more tanks in, into Ukraine yes. and the British as well. And yeah. the, the idea that the more weapons you make and the more weapons you disseminate will, it's proven through history, they will get used. And we are making more nuclear weapons now as well. And what is the point of that? If, uh, if all countries have taken a vow to, uh, to never use nuclear weapons and yet they're making more and more of them, is there not something very sick about that? Yes, there's something very schizophrenic about it, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. Yeah, something very schizoid about it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, we have here the last, um, the last image, which is very beautiful, the wind of defiance, which will blow away the man-made apocalypse. The wind of defiance. Therefore, we will now end this show with the eternal wind of defiance to blow away the man-made apocalypse. I'm so glad I was able to frame this image with the, with the fist being raised. Yes. I mean, in the, in the pageants and at the end of most of the big theater pieces, there is always a, it's an earth mother often with huge arms yeah. that uh, reaches across the meadow and people uh, enter and join the embrace of the arms. And so this is a... Uh, a new version, of, a version crafted for exactly this, uh, this uh, cathedral. <laughs> I love those little uh, twigs, branches, also painted white. It just, it just... Yes, Peter has often do done that, painted the the branches that he uses in, in the pieces. Yeah. In other words, that ultimately we have to we have to work together. We have to come together. Yes. Yeah. 
the embrace, the opening up, yeah. Yes, because there, ultimately it seems, you know, there has to be love. There has to, there has to be love. It's the only answer to the dilemma. <laughs> and, and love has to have a certain power. There has to the power of love. working together to, to make it spread, to communicate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It certainly seems that that is the intention that has been, mm -hmm. that, that is here. Yes. Yeah. Well, so that's the end of the um, apocalypse trauma theater piece that was performed in, uh, in September of this year. And um, do you have comments about the whole thing now? About, about the piece itself, about yeah. the apocalypse trauma piece? Well, there, over the last few years, uh, the circuses have been called the Apocalypse Defiance Circus the anti-propaganda circus. You can see these. Uh, you can see them on the, my website at Jerome Lipani YouTube. Uh, you, you can see those productions. That has been going on for a while. You know, the last few years have been, Peter has been particularly focused on that, on how are we going to turn around this apocalypse that we have brought about ourselves. Yes. <clears throat> well, okay, I hope everyone has enjoyed. This has been a sort of uh, um, experience through this theater piece and us talking over it sometimes. So I hope you will go to um, Jerome's website and watch the whole thing. And uh, so we thank you for joining us today. <laughs>